This is John Polamy of the Actionable Intelligence Alert. Today's March 4th, 2018. And today I want to talk about uh, offshore oil drillers, a undervalued and contrarian play. I highlighted uh, the oil drillers, specifically ENSCO, in my recent portfolio updates that I posted to the website. The offshore driller that I want to focus on is ENSCO. I believe it's the probably the one or number one or number two offshore oil driller uh, for many reasons that I'm not going to go into go through in this video. However, I think what I'm going to to just to discuss applies to all the oil drillers, not just ENSCO. Now, when we're talking about anything to do with oil or oil drillers or offshore oil drillers or service companies, it all begins with the price of oil. Um, obviously, exploration and production companies are going to base their decisions on whether to invest on their cash flow situation, the price of the commodity, their current financial condition. These are various factors that go into deciding whether or not you, you're in, you're going to invest in new production. Now, as you can see from this chart of oil going back to uh, late 2013, you can see the oil price dropped off from over $100 a barrel only crashed all the way down to a low here in uh, 2016 of around $18 a barrel. Since then, we've recovered to a current $60 a barrel, although Brent crude's about $64, $65 a barrel. So it's obvious that during this time, when oil prices were going down, cash flows are being constricted by the low oil price. So therefore, quite a few oil companies or most oil companies um, had their cash flows constricted. Therefore, they were not incented, incentivized to drill additional wells. In, in fact, many oil companies went out of business. Many service companies went out of business because of this low oil price. This was one of the biggest and worst downturns uh, in recent memory for the oil industry. Now, we know oil is a commodity and it's a cyclical business. Therefore, the contrarian mindset, the cyclical understanding of the industry is paramount to being successful. As I've said before, when we're dealing with these commodity markets or these resource markets, you cannot just buy and hold these things for five or 10 years. It's not a consumer growth company or some software company that's just going to grow earnings every year for 20 years. These are cyclical businesses. And the way you make money is you sell here at the top and you buy here at the bottom. Now, this is very difficult to do as we've talked about many times in the past. Up here, it's all at the top when prices are high, it's all unicorns and Skittles in euphoria and everybody's happy and everybody's feeling fat and smart. Down here, when the price is $18 a barrel, everybody's despondent and suicidal and the rational mind uh, has to take over from the emotion. The emotion is telling you when you're reading all these headlines about the oil industry is going to you know, collapse, all these businesses are going, out, go, going bankrupt, all the people are on TV saying, don't go anywhere near this, and everybody rationalizes the price up here, but they also get on TV and try to rationalize the price down here. Lower for longer, shale oil, all this. So as we've seen over the last year, year and a half, the oil price has really recovered substantially. So therefore cash flows have increased. And we've talked about this other factor before. Oil is a depleting asset. Every barrel that you pump out of the ground has to be replaced if you want to stay in business. So at some point, you have to resume exploring for and developing new resources. And with the oil price now higher, cash flows have recovered, and oil companies now are going into the next up cycle and will begin spending money on exploration and development, which means money will trickle down to the service providers, i.e. offshore oil drillers. This should not be hard to understand. So I want to focus on a few slides from the recent ENSCO corporate presentation. They recently had their fourth quarter and year-end conference call. Had a couple of interesting slides, I think, that apply to all offshore oil drillers and also, in general, reinforce some of the ideas we've been talking about around mindset 
that the contrarian must have and how to be successful in these resource investing markets. Now, here is a chart of global fleet utilization of offshore oil drilling rigs going back to 1984. And ENSCO points out the fact that there have been six significant upcycles since 1985. And they point them out on the chart. And you can see after you have these huge down cycles that coincide with collapses in the price of oil, you have the subsequent rebounds. Okay. You can go back and if you, I'm not going to do the work, but you can go back and look at the work and see that these are times when the oil price was down, cash flows were constricted, people pulled back, and the industry consolidated. And yet, when oil prices turned around, the industry recovers. Now, look at this recent decline in the industry. It's one of the worst, if not, it is the worst in the last, you know, 40 years, basically, going back to 1984. 586. So if you're looking at this and you're a speculator or contrarian like we are, why would we think that there wouldn't be a recovery after such a big drop? Why would we think that this time would be different? In fact, I I will I will put forth the view that not only are we going to recover, but this recovery will be even bigger than some of the previous recoveries just because the down cycle was so bad. I mean, there were so many companies that actually went out of business. There's so many um, rigs that have been stacked and taken out of service. And we, we know that the oil price is cyclical and will go up. Now, my thesis is, is that the oil price is going to surprise on the upside. There's been so much damage to uh, the finding of new resources because of the low oil price over the last two years. That, that can't, that's going to take a lot of time and money to make up. But yet every day, let's remember, guys, every single day, almost 100 million barrels of oil is being produced every, every day. 100 million barrels a day is the world oil production. 99 million, let's call it 100 million. Okay, So every 10 days, that's a billion barrels of oil coming out of the ground. And we've pointed out in previous videos and, and write-ups on the website that you know, over the last 10, 15, 20 years, we're finding less and less oil. Last year was the lowest amount of oil finds of new oil reserves in the last like 20 years. And that has, that has not been unique to just last year. It has been in a decline for many years. Yet everyone that you talk to or listen to on the mainstream media, financial media is talking about the Permian Basin and shale oil. Like it's going to replace all of this oil that needs to be found around the world. It's just not going to happen. So I think the mindset is wrong. The consensus view is normally wrong. And I think this, this right here shows us that this time is not going to be different. Investment will come back. The industry will recover. The strongest companies will perform the best. And I believe Ensco is one of the strongest companies. Now, like I said before, I mean, here we are. Here's a chart that shows the global fleet utilization, which is the blue line. And the orange line is the change in exploration and production offshore capital expenditures. So basically, this is not hard to follow. Um, as cash flows increase, rig utilization goes up. That that's, should not be hard to understand. Okay, so this is another interesting chart. Over here on the right, average annual depletion rates of 11% and 4% for deep water and shallow water production, respectively. So every year we talk about depletion in oil fields. I talk about it at least. We don't seem to hear a lot about it from financial press or people that talk about oil markets. Most of the time, people just focus on oil supply, uh, shale this, shale that, OPEC this, OPEC that. But every day that these wells are producing, they're depleting the reserves that are in the ground. And that is something that's not being discussed. So if you have this dearth or this big uh, reduction in, in capital expenditures to find new oil, which we had over the last two, three years because of the low oil price, yet we still have demand increasing, not only do you have to uh, produce oil and find new oil to supply that new demand, but you also have to overcome 
that depletion that you're seeing. And an offshore, we're seeing, you know, 11% in the deep water and 4% in shallow water depletion every single year, like clockwork. It doesn't stop. And if you want to talk about onshore conventional fields, those are declining by 5 to 6% a year. And if you want to talk about shale, it depends which field you're talking about, but some of those are 20, 30, 40, 50% declines, okay, every year. So you're on this never ending treadmill of having to go out and find new resources. And because of the low oil price over the last two years, nobody was looking for any new oil during that time frame because they didn't have the money. I mean, they were basically trying to stay in business, a lot of these companies, and quite a few of them didn't make it. So now we still have demand increasing, especially from the emerging markets. I mean, you look at uh, China, India, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, I mean, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Burma, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Bangladesh. I mean, oil oil is the basis of civilization. It's what creates and allows civilization. So as economic development continues in these places, oil demand is going to increase. And you're seeing it in places like India. It's just now entering its S curve or its demand curve that China was at 20 years ago. You know, people are moving from, you know, trains, bicycles to scooters to cars and as they get wealthier we know that per capita oil consumption goes up if we're talking about billions of people here so the demand for oil is going to be relentless over the at least the next cycle three to five years i understand about electric vehicles i get it that's that's not even going to count for right now not at least for this next cycle and not for probably decades there simply just is not enough uh uh demand right now when you're in india and you're buying your first car you're not looking to buy a, a seventy thousand uh, dollar tesla s or x model s or x or a fifty seven thousand dollar model three you're looking to buy a cheap you know three or four site uh cylinder you know grocery getter put, put around hyundai accent type vehicle that costs you know eight to ten thousand dollars so and when people get these vehicles they drive them that creates more oil, oil consumption. So these are all simple things to understand, but I think people forget it when we're talking about being a contrarian investor. We are at the bottom of the cycle. Things do not look that good in the industry. I mean, even if you listen to ENSCO's conference call, they're cautiously optimistic. I'm very optimistic. I mean, they're going, this industry is going to turn around. Uh, what we need to watch is the rig utilization, as rig utilization gets absorbed by the industry, as new projects get announced and capital expenditures pick up by the major oil companies and, and, and offshore oil uh, producers, utilization will go up. That means the amount of rigs that are available, more and more will be getting used. And as the utilization climbs, the supply of rigs will go down and pricing will go up. That's how this works. As pricing goes up, You'll see a sediment change and a view change uh, by the by the market, and they will afford a higher value to these stocks. Now, what's the risk for the downside? Well, the risk is the oil price. If the oil price goes down, or if the lower for longer shale people are correct, and the oil price goes back down to forty dollars a barrel, or we have an economic uh, uh, recession and the oil price goes down, then that would stall out scenario that I'm putting forward, but I don't see that right now. Um, the, the World Bank and these uh, other forecasting agencies are talking about 4% world growth this year. That's going to translate into higher oil demand. I actually think oil is going to surprise on the upside. I just think too many people don't understand the supply demand dynamic fully. And there's too much focus, especially in the United States, about what, what happens in the U.S. And the U.S. is not the driving force for oil demand. Uh, around the world. It's in the emerging markets. So uh, I, I also think that quite a few people simply don't understand the concept of depletion and the fact that these are these extractive industries are depleting assets and you have to replace the production that you've produced or you go out of business. And if you don't do that for two or three years, then you're two or three years behind. So you need to catch up. And when you get the sufficient cash flow, that's what creates these 
cyclical opportunities that we're talking about. You know, you get down here and there's been no investment, the oil price goes up, that's when you see these recoveries. So we're down here. I mean, I hope everybody's lizard brain works. Every, every decline saw a subsequent, you know, recovery and subsequent increase in the price of these offshore drilling stocks. So there it is in a nutshell. I think this is paint by numbers. It's not that hard. Uh, really, the only thing you have to watch is a couple things, the oil price and rig utilization and announcements uh, in, these, in these quarterly reports to see if these companies are seeing more activity come towards them from the major offshore oil producers. Um, I encourage you to uh, take a look at the website. I've done a portfolio update for the pre free portfolio stocks that I have. Um, I've moved now to the new paid newsletter, Actionable Intelligence Alert paid newsletter, $79 a year for 12 issues. Uh, most of my new picks, uh, high performance picks are gonna be in the newsletter. I will occasionally put out a free pick, like I'll be talking about Bank of Cyprus here coming up pretty soon. Another one of my favorites that's been a long-term favorite that's uh, showing excellent recovery, but not being recognized by the market. Uh, so I'll be talking about that on the website, but if you want those really high performance picks that we're looking for to go up 100, 200, 300, 400%, uh, those are going to be in the newsletter. Uh, you can access that by going to actionable intelligence alert backslash subscribe. And uh, that's it for this week. I appreciate your readership and for your support in watching my videos. Also, please uh, think about following me on Twitter and Facebook. I put a lot of stuff up there during the week and interact with quite a few smart people. So if you get on Twitter, uh, you're going to be exposed to, I think, a lot of people that uh, uh, really know what they're talking about, especially in these resource markets. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you again next week.